Hi everyone and welcome to Learn A-Level Biology for free with Miss Estrick. In this video we're going to do a summary of inheritance for A-Level. So looking at the different types of inheritance, the coding you would use and how you could do the genetic crosses. So if you are new here click subscribe to keep up to date with all the latest videos and if you do find it helpful please give it a thumbs up. If you do want to make notes then just grab a pen and paper to have a go at some of the genetic crosses. So first of all, it's just an overview of the key terms that come up in this topic. And the ones I've put in bold are the different types of inheritance, whereas all of the others are the key words that you could be asked. So at this stage, if you are doing this for a revision, you might want to pause the video and have a go at some key terms. One good way to make use of this as well is to try creating flashcards. Um, you can click the link at the top here if you want just to get some ideas on how to best create and use flashcards. Um, if it's the first time that you're doing inheritance, then go straight through so you can see these definitions. So the genotype phenotype you might be familiar with from GCSE, but this is the level of detail you would need for the AQA A-level exam board. So genotype is the genetic constitution, which means which alleles it has for a gene. Phenotype is the expression of the genes, but also the interaction with the environment. Homozygous is when you have two of the same alleles for a gene. Heterozygous is when you have um, two different alleles for the same gene. Recessive alleles will only be expressed if they are the only ones present. And if you have a dominant allele, that will always be expressed. So I'm going to jump down to these two. So monohybrid and dihybrid inheritance. This is just referring to when you are doing the genetic cross, how many genes you're considering at a time. So monohybrid is what you would have covered at GCSE. It's when you look at the inheritance of one gene at a time. Dihybrid is new in the A-level. And this is when you look at the inheritance of two genes at the same time. Now the five different types of inheritance here Codominant is when you have two alleles which are both dominant. So both of them will be expressed. So you'll see features from both of the alleles. Multiple alleles is when you actually have more than two options. So more than two alleles for a single gene. Sex linkage is a gene whose locus, so location or position, um, is found on the X chromosome. And autosomal linkage is genes that are located on the same chromosome but not a sex chromosome. Finally, epistasis is when one gene will modify the expression of the other. Now, these two, autosomal linkage and epistasis, I'm not going to go through in this video because I have two separate videos explaining all of those. So I'll link those at the very end so you can click to those if you want. So we're just going to focus on these three and monohybrid. So the coding then of all of these types of inheritance Monohybrid is where you just pick one letter which represents the gene and the capital will represent the dominant allele and the lowercase represents the recessive allele. For code dominance, this is now where you need to have a more sophisticated coding where you'd have the gene as your base letter and the allele is what you have up here in the superscript. So for example, I've got two over here. We've got the two alleles for a particular blood group, um, but we've got allele B and allele A. But because we have to use two different letters now, because they both have to be capitals, because they're both dominant, that's why we can't use the same letter as a capital. You have to have your gene and then pick two different letters for the alleles. Same again here, I've picked an example of um, cows and the different hair colour they can have, so red or white, both equally dominant, so they'll both be expressed. Multiple alleles, the coding is the same, because if you've got more than two alleles, you can't just use this simple coding of capital and lowercase, because you'll have three options or more. So in this case, again, you would use the base letter representing the gene, and the superscript is representing the allele. Sex linkage, because the um, chromosome is the X chromosome, that's where you find the gene of interest, what we do is we write the allele against the chromosome. But you only have 
the gene on an X chromosome. So that's why for female XX, we have our two genes. So we've got our two um, alleles of different versions for that gene. But for a male, they'll only have an allele on the X chromosome because you don't find the gene on the Y chromosome. Autosomal linkage in epistasis uses the typical monohybrid coding where you just pick one letter, capital and lowercase, um, but both of these involve dihybrid, which is the inheritance of two genes at the same time. So that's why I've got two different letters in both cases. We've got letter A representing gene A and you've got your two alleles and then we've got letter B representing a different gene, um, but your two alleles. So first of all then, monohybrid. In this example, we're going to look at cystic fibrosis. It's caused by a recessive allele. So if you have two carriers reproducing, what's the probability that the child will have cystic fibrosis? Secondly, what's the probability that they'll have a girl with cystic fibrosis? So if you want to try this, pause now. Um, so you always need to include the parental genotypes. So for this one, they're both carriers. So here are our two genotypes. Now it doesn't matter which letter you used, I just happen to use F. Now I'm gonna do my Punnett square to work out the probability. So my gametes are the single letters, and then I've crossed those together to find out the four possible genotypes. The different phenotypes, so you do need to match the phenotype exactly to the genotype, which is why within this box of Punnett square I've written that lowercase, lowercase, or homozygous recessive is cystic fibrosis. So we have 25% probability that the child will have cystic fibrosis. The second part of the question though is, what's the probability they'll have a girl with cystic fibrosis? And there's 50% probability of having a girl, so we times it by 50% probability, 12.5%. So bear that in mind, sometimes they will ask, what's the probability that you will have either a girl or a boy with a particular condition? That does not mean it is a sex-linked question necessarily. It could just mean you need to do um, your typical monohybrid Punnett square and then just times by 50%. So read carefully, if it's not a sex-linked disease, you do not need to use the X and the Y in the coding. Next, codominance. So this is the cow example that I was talking about with the red, white, or roan. Now it's not literally bright red, but we use the term red for this color, or sometimes you might see brown. But red and um, white are both dominant. So it's codominance. So that means that if an individual has both the red allele and the white allele, then their phenotype will be roan, which is this appearance just here. So we've been given an example where you've got two roan cows reproducing and the question is what's the probability they'll have red offspring? So both parents are heterozygous, they both have um, the dominant red and the dominant white, so it's co-dominance. So next then we put their gametes into the Punnett square. Then we do the cross to see what are all our possible genotypes. And again, I've matched up each of the genotypes to the phenotype. And we can see we only have 25% probability of having a red cow. That's where we have to have two of the dominant Rs, the dominant red. Same here, only way you're gonna get a white cow is having two dominant whites, because if you have one of each, it's always gonna be roan. So we're going to look at multiple alleles next. And this is actually an example where we look at multiple alleles and codominance in the same example. And it's to do with blood groups, which is a really common example at A-level biology. Because there's four different phenotypes. You can either be blood group A, B, AB or O. And what this refers to is the shape of the antigen that you have on the outside of your red blood cells. So the possible phenotypes, I've just gone through, but the genotypes that you could have then, A is dominant, B is dominant, so A and B together are co-dominant. O is recessive. So that means the only way you can be blood group O phenotype is if you have two of those recessive O alleles. Blood group AB is co-dominant, so you'd have to have one allele which is A, one allele which is B. But for blood group A and B, there's two possible genotypes. You could either be homozygous 
or you could be heterozygous and have one of the dominant B for blood group B and the recessive O. Same idea for blood group A, you could have one of the dominant A alleles and one of the recessive O alleles and you'd still have the dominant expressed which would be blood group A. So let's go through a genetic cross example for this then. So we've got parents with blood group AB and the second parent is blood group O. They reproduce and we're reminded here that A and B are dominant, so they're co-dominant and O is recessive. So what's the probability of these parents having offspring with blood group A? So we've got the parental genotypes would be, one of them is co-dominant, so AB. The other one is blood group O, so they have to be homozygous recessive for the O allele. So in our Punnett square, then I've put the gametes on the outside. I've then crossed together to see what are our four possible genotypes, and I've written in the blood groups. So in this example, we'd end up with 50% probability of having blood group A. Next then is the sex linkage. Now we said sex linkage is when the gene is only found on the X chromosome. And the example we've got is color blindness here. So red green color blindness um, is caused by a recessive allele, which is only found on the X chromosome. If a non color blind male reproduces with a female carrier of the allele, what's the probability their children will be colorblind? So this time we have to use the coding to demonstrate their biological sex as well as which allele they have on the X chromosome. So the female is a carrier, so she has one dominant R for normal vision, one recessive R for colorblind. The male only has one X chromosome and we're told that they are not colorblind, so that means they have to have the dominant allele representing not colorblind. There is no allele next to the Y because you do not find the gene on the Y chromosome. So now we do our Punnett square. So we've split up the gametes. So in the egg cells, you'll either have X recessive R or X dominant R. In the sperm cells, you'll either have X dominant R or a Y chromosome. So now we match those all up in our Punnett square to see the four possible genotypes. I've then matched that with the phenotypes and there's only 25% probability that they will have a child being colorblind. So that's it. That's some examples of how you do the genetic crosses and the coding you'd use. Sometimes what students do find harder though is knowing which type of inheritance they're meant to use. Now with sex linkage, they would have to tell you it is a sex linked example. Um, with monohybrid, that would mean you'd only have two possible phenotypes. If it's codominance or multiple alleles, the way you can tell is from the written information, if there's more than three, sorry, more than two phenotypes, so for example, having three, it must be codominance and or multiple alleles. So that's your top tip. See how many different phenotypes there are. If it's only two, it's going to be monohybrid. If it's more than that, it's codominant or multiple alleles. And they have to tell if it's sex linkage. So if you do want to try some questions on this just to see can you work out which coding to use, head over to MissEstrick.com and go to the topic seven section for inheritance questions. I hope you have found this helpful. And if you have, please give it a thumbs up.